Proverbs chapter 21 verse, we'll pick it up in verse number 11. When a scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. Again, you know, correction, public correction does make people think, decide what America thinks. When somebody sees that they do get fined, they do get punished, they do get a, a, a payment for what they do, they do uh, reap what they sow, others will see and others will avoid. At least that's supposed to be the natural. You know, when you see somebody go to prison, that's supposed to be, oh, you know, I better not do that. But when you go from a life of crime into a place that takes care of you, I don't know what the what the punishment is. Punishment is supposed to be it's supposed to be harsh. It's supposed to be painful. It's not supposed to be comforting. It's two different words. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. Instructed by God, you get more. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked. Now, he doesn't envy the house of the wicked. He considereth. He thinks about how the wicked man got the goods. Unrighteous ways. He thinks about the wicked man. He's going to die and go to hell. He thinks about, you know, being wicked is not good. He's not really happy. He doesn't have the joy. But God overthrows the wicked for their wickedness. Psalms 1, 5, and 6. We're not to look upon the wicked in envy. Well, look what he's got. God's going to overthrow them. Don't look at their goods and, and, you know, is it really worth being a Christian? Look what he, no. God has not dealt with them yet. And you don't know how he got those riches in, in the house. You don't know what's behind the closed doors and, and the closed windows and the walls you can't see through. Stay with God and be in God's heart. Seek that what is righteous and not that which is wicked. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Galatians 6, 7-9. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth. And you, <coughs> you can go to the far extremes with this one. You can go at one Get away from me. I'm not going to give nobody nothing. And then you can go far as the other scale, number 10. I'm just going to hand out money to every organization without checking them out. And both of those streams are wrong. Now, just because a guy holds a sign, just because a guy comes up to you and says, well, I, I want need money for food, they may not be. You may have to test the waters. Because there have been people caught on camera who stand there with a sign, you throw them five bucks, and they follow him off, and he, he gets into a Cadillac and takes off old, those old rubbery clothes, and you know, he's wearing nice pants and a nice shirt. There may be that guy who asks you for a couple bucks for a sandwich, and he just may be going to go buy marijuana or booze. What is the test? When a guy comes up to you on the street and wants to buy a sandwich, say, hey, you really want to help him? Say, come on, we'll go into this place and I'll buy you a sandwich, I'll buy you a drink and a bag of potato chips or whatever. Now, if he's truly looking for food and he's truly hungry, he'll take you in the offer. But in the most cases that I have seen, and that, uh, oh, no, 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 let me have the money. and uh, I got this particular place. I'll take you to the particular place. Oh, no, 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 no. And you'll find out they really don't want the mo money for the food. They want it for something else. 
Now, there's one person I did give money to. I didn't take him anywhere. Uh, he said it was for a place to stay. And I told him, I said, listen, this I am giving to you after witnessing to him and opening the Bible. I told him, I said, listen, I'm giving you this in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you take this money, and, and if you lied to me, I told him, I said, I don't know. But I said, if you lied to me and, and you use it for other purposes, you're doing it in the name of Jesus. This is why I'm giving you the money. Now, the person that's outside the stores or whatever, holding the sign here, all right, pull over and say, hey, listen, I'll give you money if you come over to my house and cut my lawn. I got some odd jobs around the house. I'm not going to give you just free money. I'm, you're going to earn it somehow. And in most cases, you watch them back out. I have seen somebody outside of a big store somebody throw a five dollar bill out the window and the person complained because right right in front of us that person complained he had to walk out the street and bend over to pick up the five bucks mm -hmm. if you're going to complain to bend over i don't think you're going to come over my house and cut the lawn You, in this day and age in society, you have to test the waters. Now, back in the Old Testament, it was known. Listen, the book of Acts chapter 3, I believe we read today, is they went in there and helped this guy. Uh, he was lame. He gets up, and he's walking around, and people say, Hey, is that the lame guy? Yeah, that's the lame guy. Jesus healed a guy in John chapter 8. He was blind. Like, hey, that's the blind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the See, they knew who needed help. But in this impersonal world that we live in America today, you don't know the person. you got to test the waters. I'm trying to say use common sense when it comes to this. And if he's truly needed food, help him. If they're not, blow them away. Blow them off. Don't give them anything. He also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. Now, imagine if you get down to that point. You know, America may be headed to poverty. I mean, America it, it all in general. Listen, we're losing our jobs. We're, we're losing our checks. It ain't going to do you good if you have an entire superstore with shelves full and no one ain't got no money for them. Matter of fact, you're going to be the first person to attack when there is no money and your window's broken. And then you're going to be crying. You, you could own an entire grocery store chain and if everybody's broken into your store because they don't, you're not going to pay them no more. You're not going to give them work. And your shelves are empty. You're going to cry to God and go, oh, God says, hey, what about it? Well, didn't I give the dented cans to charity? Big deal. And let's check your IRS 1040 form and see how much you... Yeah, 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 yeah. See, we know. A gift in secret pacifieth anger. Genesis 32, 11. Now, this is not necessary a, a bribe. And this is where you get the idea where the guy brings home the candy or the flowers when he got his wife upset. It's not a bribe. It's you trying quietly without making a show to show, you know what? I've done wrong. I'm sorry. Let me please the matter. And it should be handled like that. You shouldn't go, hey, look, everybody, look what I'm going to do. To, to, you know, this, this brother is mad at me. Look what I'm going to do. To, no, that's not how it's done. It's being humble enough and breaking that pride to say, I've done wrong. Jacob done it with his brother. And a reward in the bosom, strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment.
Wait a minute. It is joy to do just. Uh, yeah, it is joy to do. It is joy to the just to do judgment. Wait a minute. Judge not least ye be ju judged. Yeah, but you know what? I'm in joy telling you about the gospel. What's your joy? You don't have joy. He needs to be judged. That's not joy. I enjoy telling people and God giving me the opportunity to speak the most wondrous full words ever. That Christ died for them and was buried and arose from the grave that they may be saved. That is joy. And that is judgment. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to a place called hell. And the greater joy will be to find out when we get to glory that some of these people I've talked to actually did later on in their life trust Christ as their Savior. Won't that be a joy? Wouldn't it be great when you support missionaries and you do the work of the Lord, pass out gospel tract? Uh, wherever, whenever, however you can do it, and then you get to heaven and you get these people that come up to you and start wrapping their arms around you, you're like, what's going on here? Man, I didn't even get that love from my blood family. I didn't even get that love from a church. Why are these people all wrapping their arms around me? Because you somehow gave them the gospel. And they're in glory now. Because you show them the judgment upon sin. Now what about the lack of joy when you tell someone about Jesus Christ and they get all angry at you in your face with scripture that they couldn't even find if, if you gave them an index and a, a one page Bible. With the page where it is. And they get cast off into hell because they didn't want to judge. You know, Paul tells a Christian, you're to judge yourself daily with the sins in your life. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You don't want that destruction. When God destructs, it's destructive. I don't think there are any more buildings over there in Sodom and Gomorrah, but they can find the remnants of them, and they... And what they say, they, they find it, they, they find these buildings and all that just full of holes. Look at machine gun, even before machine gun was made from all the hail. And the fire and the brimstone. Check out the places that God has destroyed himself in the Bible and then go over there and have the archaeologists dig it up and tell you, wow. Destruction. You know, there are places where volcanoes have gone off. And you talk about that in time, there, the lives that were lived at that moment are frozen up in, in solid ash form. People with, with terror on their face, frozen in time. You don't want to get into God's destruction, I'll tell you that. You need just to believe what God has told you to do. And do it. That will get rid of all trouble. And it's saved or lost. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. You don't have. That's not something that, you know, oh, I'm saved and I'm. No. You can be saved and be a worker of iniquity. Don't think you're left out because I'm saved. The man that wandereth out of the way of righteousness, excuse me, understanding. The man that wandereth out of the way. Philippians 3.14. If he wandereth out of the way, that means he was in the way. You can't come out of something that you weren't in. So here's a guy that was in the way of understanding, and he's come out of it, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. No spiritual aim or zeal or goal. 
American churches. There are Baptist churches that are dead. Read the Laodicean church age. You're miserable, blind, wretched, and poor. At least one of the churches thought they were dead, and God says, you, you've got a name. Dead. You were doing right one day, now you're wrong. And you know what? That, that's the apostate church that, that we are all going to. Until the Lord comes. The Bible, Paul says, the churches will not get better. They'll get worse. And I'm seeing it. And I've been in them. You may have been on hellfire and damnation preaching and, and people saved 40 years ago. But it ain't happening today. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Spends all his money. On entertainment he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich you're only gonna buy more you drink the wine and you gotta buy more and it's usually more than just water or soda now the oil here it could have been oil for lamps too much night life an oil anoint in the face, too much, you know, anoint in the face to go out, partying. I don't know what the really what the oil is. I'll just give you two illustrations that I know from the Bible. It's anoint in the face and for lights. You know, the ten virgins had oil for the lamps, burning. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous, and the transgressor for the upright. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous. Now, look at my notes here. The ransom is John 3.14. The wicked. Haman died for Mordecai. Those gallows were put up for Mordecai to die. Haman died on him. Shall is a promise. Now, it was completely opposite for Barabbas. Barabbas was the wicked one, and Jesus was the innocent one. Wicked will get their day. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Then with a contentious and angry woman. Well, we just read about a contentious woman the other night. Now it does add anger to it. And it does not say wife. I've got a note here. It says, better to shoot deer, D-E-E-R, rather than his deer, D-E-A-R. The other one was a better dwelling in the corner top of house. Listen, if your husband or your father is not spending time at home and is away, the problem may lie within the house. And I'm not going to say the wife as a general because it says a woman. It doesn't say wife. It could be any woman living underneath that house. And yes, it can be the wife. And with a woman in the house like that, he would rather not be home. Now this is a guy that would marry a thousand wives. There is a treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wives It's light, the supply of for home and for the church, but a foolish man spendeth it up, 
improper use, waste. Those foolish, those foolish virgins didn't bring enough oil. He let the, he had the he had the candle lit when it shouldn't have been lit. There are some churches. There's one church I you know I pass all night when I come home from work. And I go to all the lights are lit around the place. You don't need that. You're you're running up electrical bill that you don't need. There's another church as I go into work. Place is dark, but the church sign and this big old emblem they got on the on the side of on side of the building. Why do you need that lit up all the time? That's a waste of money. We're not to waste. Especially the money that comes into the church, we're not to waste that. We need to be realized that what we do with our money and our resources, God is writing it down in a book and recording it. When Jesus fed the, the 5,000 to 4,000, the, the next orders for the disciples was pick up the fragments. He didn't just leave them for the birds. Did you just see Peter sitting there fighting with a bird over? Jesus told me to grab that. Give it back. He that follows after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. That's just plain and simple. He that follows after righteousness, Jesus, and mercy, Jesus, findeth life, Jesus, righteousness, again, Jesus, and honor through Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Guy getting mad at me the other day because every question I was giving him the scriptures, giving him the Bible, he didn't want to hear that. Well, that's what the answer is. Well, men wrote it. Yeah, that's just a cop out. Yes, men wrote it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the Word. And the Bible says the Word is Jesus. And Jesus is the Word. Without it, what would we know? A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty. And casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. A wise man knows how to take down an entire city. Joab was such a wise man. He did conquer an entire city. Jabez. And took the crown off. Well, David took the crown off the king and wore the crown. Joshua knew how to conquer entire cities. Joshua only lost one battle. And that one battle was lost because of one man in prayer or lack of. How was Joshua wise? In the Lord. What did Joshua do to bring the walls of Jericho down? Absolutely nothing. It was all God. What did Joshua do that the walls of Jericho came down but one little section of, of a woman and her family? Now, can you just picture this for a minute? And I don't want to say I know God, but reading the Bible, I have an idea about God. God is funny. He's hilarious. Can you picture these walls all around Jericho? And the only section that does not fall down is the walls that separate Rahab's house. That six walls, the ceiling, the floor, and the four walls, he just pictured that wall everywhere gone, scrapped down to the ground, but that cubicle that she lived in. That's what I picture of God. <laughs> Watch this, you guys. Try to explain this one. And how did Joshua do that? Marching around the place with trumpets and all that, and then shouting? What if Joshua went in there with AK-7s and tanks and all that? You think God would have given him the credit? You think God would have tore those walls down? You think God would have saved Rahab? So Joshua's wisdom was God. 
You want to bring a city down and have a great revival? You need God. But those days in America are gone. You got to break the pride. You got to break the confidence. You got to break the strength. You know why Rehab was saved out of that entire city? She humbled herself and feared God. Uh, how many? How many people were in, in Jericho? God told a prophet one time, I want you to go to this major city, and I want you to preach to it. I'm going to destroy the city. The lack, the, the breaking down of pride and their strength and their confidence, they, they, they got right before God, the animals, the, everybody. And God says, no, I'm going to spare you. And who got angry with that one? The prophet that God sent. That's a reversal. Listen, if I want to go and tear the walls down of a farmer's market for people's hearts, I need to go in God and not myself. I go there believing that God is going to do a work somehow in some way in someone's heart. And it's not me. It's all about God. When you read all those people of God who destroyed places, it was God. I don't care if you use an ox gold. It's still God. Whoso keepeth his mouth, and this reference I've got here is Proverbs 12, 13, 13, 3, 18, 21, Isaiah 3, 2, I believe will be Isaiah 1, 26, and Matthew 12, 36 tells you you're going to be judged by your mouth. Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, now look at this, and then 29, 11, add to it, keepeth his soul Now, another study that we're not going to get into, but in the Old Testament, your soul was attached to your flesh. There was no spiritual circumcision. But keeping his soul from trouble. You want to stay out of trouble? Shut up. How's that? Don't tell me to shut up. The Bible just told you. There are some times you just don't need to say anything. I tell you, you know, when I want to say something, I'll say, Lord, did you see that? Lord, did you hear that? Lord, did you see that person? Lord, I'm going to do whatever it takes to bite my tongue. I'm not I'm going to let you take care of it. I've seen the Lord take care of it. Why start a fight? Why start a conflict, a conflict with someone? And you know what? You may be wrong. It also saves you from eating crow. I don't like crow. I don't care if you have ketchup and barbecue sauce. I don't like crow. You know why a preacher always gets in trouble? You know why I get in trouble preaching on the streets? Because I won't shut my mouth. They would all love me to shut my mouth. But that is the proper tongue to speak. Proud, uh oh, and haughty scorner. Remember chapter one? Well, that scorner keeps going. Now he's got. Now here's one that's proud and haughty. You know he's. Look at me, who I am, and he's got his head in the clouds. Is his name? Who dealeth in proud wrath? Chapter fifteen, twelve, Matthew twenty-three, twelve, and it was the Pharisees. That were proud and haughty. And they, they, you know, they walk around three with their feet three inches off the ground. And they were happy to, to throw you out of the synagogue. 
We, if Jesus said, oh, what is it, you know, they will they'll do all kinds of things to you thinking they do God's service. Man, they thought when they killed Jesus that they were right in all that. The desire to slothful, the, the lazy guy, killeth him. For he for his hands refused the labor. Well, guess what? He dies of starvation. So you gotta ask yourself, when you see some of these people that die, you know, they show you on the television, send fifteen dollars and you get watch this person die. Maybe they're dying because they don't want to work. You ever think about that? You know, if America cut the food stamp, there'll be plenty of people who will die of starvation. Sorry to say that, but that's that's the truth. And you know it's the truth. But feeding them free movie, movie, free, free money from someone else who earned it is not Bible doctrine. If they don't want to get a job, what's the Bible say? The desire of slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He covet, coveteth greedily all the day long. The sluggard, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The righteous know how to give. And they will give and keep giving. And you can never outgive God, and I'm not coming up with a the promissory, you know, hopeful message, you know, give God $10, he'll give you 10 That's not what I'm saying. Those that love the Lord are not stingy with their pocketbook. The sacrifice of the wicked, we've talked about that many times. You know, you, you come to church service and you're wicked. You give money to a church, and you don't even have to go to church. You just give the money to the church. It's an abomination. It's extremely hated by God. What did Jesus say about the Pharisees? They would tithe mint and anise. You mean the same ones that put him on the cross? Don't you see? Don't you see these big wealthy people, and especially we just had an election in this country, all the, you know, they gave money to, to these particular churches to make it look right, and they're wicked, and they have nothing to do with God, and God says that's an abomination. And they actually think that God is ringing the heavenly bells because they gave money. There are churches where there are fools, and they have the money dance, the money march. You start off with a dollar and you work your way to the highest amount of personal giving that church for a big show. And God says, I hate that. Every single time they do that, I hate that. Son, is any of their names in the book of life? Gabriel, you want to check the book? It's not. Long suffering. Long suffering. See, that's an abomination to God, but God is long serving. I just wish they'd get right. I wish they'd stop thinking it was money, but, but the blood. Oh, the fields are whiter than the harvest. Who's praying that I, I shall send people out? How much more when he brings it with a wicked mind? Ooh. Malachi 1 6, Isaiah 1 11. Not only does he does he bring the wicked not only does the wicked bring the money a sacrifice that's an abomination of God, and he brings it with wickedness. His thoughts. 
A false witness shall perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not. Guess what perish means? The Bible says that New Jerusalem does not have any liars in it. You know, there's a thing called out there easy believism. That's a lie. Told by liars. A true, honest man who believes that God is his Savior and has trusted Christ as his Savior. How can he still be a false witness or a liar? Now, I understand, listen, in life, you may have that moment where you tell a lie. To cover your butt because of fear. But a false witness is different from that. He purposely goes up and tells something that is not true. And God says he shall perish. But the man that heareth speaketh. But the man that heareth speaketh the truth. The man that heareth speaketh. The man we're talking about, unlike the false witness, is a witness. What he heareth, he will speak. And it will be it's 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 taken for granted the truth. Even if you if you tell it to the point that maybe you, you get a couple things mixed up in it. Listen, all four Gospels speak about the same events. But haven't you noticed that some of them, are, they're changed, they're different? And it's not a lie, it's you're getting it from four different people, four aspects, four different directions of what happened. Not one of those Gospel writers were a false witness. And people will use that, well, see how they don't match. No, they do match. And you call any police officer on any police force of any 50 states, and you get them in a room who has had witness, who has had an auto accident, and who has dealt with witnesses, and I will sit down and tell you, you can have five different witnesses for the same accident, you're going to get five different stories. And you'll get somebody who'll come, you know, it was a green car, and, and, and wait, wait a minute. That's not what everybody else said. Everybody else said the car didn't go down, main, the green car that went down Main Street. That's not what everybody else said. That's the false witness. <coughs> and for whatever reason, it does not jive with the rest. A wicked man hardens his face. But as for the upright, he directed his way. You make your face hard. You make it hard from the truth. You don't want it against God. And I believe it's Isaiah or is it Ezekiel. One of them says they had made their faces like an adamant stone. Towards God. It's it, it's rock hard. There's no breaking. It's not that a guy goes in there and puts plaster of Paris or cement on his face. It's their reaction to God. And America is going there. We're not there yet. There are people who will still tell you thank you for a gospel track with you guys are doing a good job. I think there are a lot of people in that farmer's market, I think their faces are hardened. And that's a great example. 
Why does the gospel make you so upset that you gotta throw uh, radishes? There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. Now, you write this down. Any ology. Anything with the ending of O-L-O-G-Y is against God. Numerology, psychology, and all those. Romanism. Another good one. Demonism. And have you noticed with that, you got Mormonism. Why is it that it's for us, those who are truly of the Bible, it's called Christian in, I-A-N. Everything else is an ology or ism, but the true are I-A-N. Why is that? Science will not last. Evolution shall not last. Psychiatry will not last. Only those things which are done for God will last. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never. We that are born again Christians, will never pass away we are eternal all the seed that we put out that produces uh, fruit will not pass away the horse is prepared against the day of battle but safety is of the Lord and, and that verse right there concludes with it's all on God Joshua did not put his faith in consonant in, 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 the, in the men's mouth when they shouted. It was in God. Gideon. What? Pictures they broke with candles in them. And horns. It was God. Moses stood at the Red Sea. Watch and see what God's going to do. And God's like, Go. And Moses is looking at the water like, yeah, sure. Raises the rod and then it opens up. You know, there could have been boats there on the Red Sea and it would not have been enough for all the Israelites. There are places the Bible says that they had their you know, iron chariots as far as, as, as much as the sand of the sea and God beat their butt. There was, there was a king that, you know, well, the, the, the Israelites beat us in the mountains. Well, if we go down the valleys, our gods of the valleys are stronger than the gods of the mountain. Let's go and God beat them up. And we got verses Deuteronomy 13, 16, 2 Chronicles 1, 17, and Psalm 33, 17. Don't put your confidence in a God-made thing, like a horse, or a man-made thing. Put your confidence in God and let him choose the weapon. Like the, the, the jawbone of an ass, the ox gourd, the shouting, the, uh, the candles, and the horns. And digging ditches in a valley. You know, you may prepare the horse... You know, I may go down. I may go down the street thing where I'm gonna do like I've always done it, and God will be like, you know what? No, don't. I want you. This is what I want you to do different. This is what I want. This is the weapon I want you to do today. Now next week we may go somewhere where we haven't sat in the two or three years we've been down here. And we might get results. I don't know. We're not down there for results. But then we can't say, oh, we're going to do it like this for the next four more years. And that may not work.
There are times that the Lord speaks to me. He says, I want you to read that chapter. I want you to read that. I want you to preach that particular thing. It's not going to work next week. It's not the same horse. You got to let God give you the weapon, the means, the, the source, the noun, whatever it is. Take what God has used you, but don't put confidence in that. Keep it in the Word and keep it with God always. That's what will get you by.